Good morning. Hold on. Let me turn this off. <laughs> kind of a confused morning as I, uh, I was lingering too long on my Bible and I didn't pay attention to the time. And the time snuck up on me. So uh, and then I raced down to the bike and got going. I realized that I forgot my, <laughs> my lunch. So I came back upstairs to pick that up. Now I'm way out of time and I don't have time to get gas. So I'll have to hopefully just make it back with, make it to work and not run out of gas. And just pick up gas on the way back, which is fine. I'll drop this in here, drop the lunch in there. And we go. So welcome to Freeway Bible Study. Whoop. My name is Kurt. I'm your host. Uh, I'm a non-believer, but I like to study the Bible. I like to learn uh, about the stories, and uh, well, particularly I want to know know if it's true. You know, it's a lot riding on riding on there, right? You know, if we make that mistake. Although honestly, from just from what I've read so far, if it turned out that it was true, I would certainly believe that God is real, but I wouldn't uh, I wouldn't worship such a God doesn't seem like a very uh, a very good guy so, but nevertheless uh, we study on so Genesis I mean, Genesis Exodus 2 the birth of Moses so it turns out there's a man of the house of Levi and he marries a woman of the house of Levi and they have a babe. Ostensibly of the house of Levi. No, I think that's the uh, priestly class, right? Of the uh, group. So, kind of sets Moses up for, th for that particular role. And, um, now of course Pharaoh, we learned in Exodus 1, Pharaoh has uh, said that uh, any boys born of uh, the Israelites will be drowned in the, in the River Nile. So, um, this woman, this Levite woman, she she has, uh, she hides uh, the, the baby for three months and until she can hide it no longer because she sees that he's a goodly baby and uh, she hides him for three months until she can, can't really conceal that fact anymore and then she uh, takes the baby, makes a, uh, uh, a papyrus, there's a, makes a, there, takes a papyrus basket and fills it up with, um, or, no, or covers it with tar and uh, puts it, puts Moses, puts the baby Moses, no, he's not called Moses yet. She puts him into the basket, although he probably had a name, right? I wonder what his original name was. Put him in the basket and uh, sits him in the reeds by the flagstones near where um, some where people come to bathe. And then Moses' sister, and I, this was where I got a bit of a correction, because previously I thought it was the mother's sister, but it wasn't. It was Moses' older sister stands by to watch what happens to the baby. And as she's watching, she sees um, Pharaoh's daughter. Cool it, Kurt. Driving too fast. I know I'm running late. But that's no excuse to let uh, to be dangerous. So just ease up, Kurt. Don't be dangerous. Don't be a dangerous driver. Here. Just a second, please. You know what we'll do? We'll take we'll take the pass instead. That'll get us up over the top. And maybe we'll recover some of this lost time. That way. Let me just gas up real quick. Isn't it interesting how uh, if you get just a little bit off your game, off the routine, it can really uh, you know, cause the, the mind to kind of fluster a little bit. And that becomes dangerous and reckless. You know, I'm speaking the obvious, you know that. moment. And almost 
way to the gas. So then, um, <coughs> she places the baby in the reeds, in the, ba in the basket, and it's important to note that there are flagstones, so I'm picturing that to mean like uh, flat stones right at the water's edge. And Pharaoh's daughter comes down to bathe with her maids. And while she's bathing, the maids are walking along the water's edge. The first thought that came to my mind was, watch out for the crocodiles, right? They're walking along the water's edge, and they discover... Do they discover it, or does the woman discover it first? I think the woman might actually spy it first. The little reed arc, and that's the word that's used, I think. And it's covered. And they spy that, and they go and... She instructs her maids to go pick it up. And when they open it, they discover the baby Moses. Or not, yeah, not yet Moses. They discover the baby boy inside. And he's crying. And this softens the heart of Pharaoh's daughter, who is, who, who, who is basically, you know, her, like I said, her, her heart is softened. You know, Moses' sister. Oh, and she says, this, this is surely one of the children of the Hebrews, the Hebrew, one of the Hebrew babes. And she recognizes the baby boy, and she, of course, probably knows about her father's edict, and uh, so she's going to show a little mercy. And then the sister, Moses' sister, then arrives and says, shall I fetch a, a wet nurse to, you know, to take care of the baby? Which apparently my, my biblical scholarship you know there's because my bible a really good one it has lots of good scholarship which seems to have been produced by some pretty um, <coughs> you know even-handed uh, scholars so i'll tell you why in just a second they said that uh it was a the, the common for uh, in that era for wet nurses to be employed to take care of baby and that their term of employment was typically three years and that they would be responsible to nurse the baby and that their wages would be uh, whatever they needed to live so basically their food I didn't say of lodging but maybe like they gave them their food and stuff like that so this Pharaoh's daughter agrees to the wet nurse idea and Moses' sister goes and fetches, guess who? Their mother. Her mother and Moses' mother. And who, who of course, is, is uh, has been nursing because it's she's Moses' mother. And what, what serendipity. <laughs> and uh, she, and then, and she comes, and uh, Pharaoh's daughter, oh wow, can you just imagine the joy in her heart? Wow. Pharaoh's daughter, or Pharaoh, yeah, Pharaoh's daughter instructs that she's to take the baby to be, uh, and take care of the baby, and that she'll be provided with living wages. Apparently, and that goes on for some years. It doesn't say, well, it doesn't say how long. Like it says until I guess until he's weaned or some time past that. But eventually, the baby is uh, brought into the house of Pharaoh's daughter, and I don't know, I think it was then, or maybe before, she was named Moses, or he was named Moses, by Pharaoh's daughter, apparently. <coughs> and I think, I think when I was reading Genesis, and particularly when I was studying Exodus, there was some, a lot of mention made that uh, the word Moses was the he Hebrew name, and that that was some evidence of the Hebrew origins. But it turns out that that actually is a pretty common uh, the second part of that, the osis, apparently, is a pretty common, uh, you know, particle name name particle. If I'm using, if I'm making a phrase up, right? That basically, that it could have meant anything from just boy to a few other things. And the the Bible scholarship in my Bible actually cited several examples of Egypt Egyptian names that had that pot piece in it, and it showed how how the, what the meaning was. So it's entirely feasible that that is indeed a uh, an Egyptian name, although it happens to resemble a Hebrew name. Now maybe that's an maybe that's an invention of the authors. Who knows? So anyway, I'm going to take the pass now. So anyway, now uh, let's see if I can recover this time. Six fifteen. Let me fire this up. Oh, I got a red light. See, Kurt. 
getting hot with this anxiety about being late for work. Cool it, cool it. Stay calm and collected. Sometimes the sensor won't see my bike. <laughs> and this guy ran right through it. So I'm trying to cool it, but he's not trying to cool it. He just ran right through it. So, um... So let's see, 7.01. Let's see how the time changes. The map app says I'm going to arrive at work at 7.01. My start time is 7 o'clock. I'm going to, and it knows that I'm going to take the 5 and then the 55. But I'm going to, I'm going to pull a fast one here. And we'll take the pass, which is going to cost me a toll. But it'll take me up and, up and over the pass. Let's see how much time that'll buy me. I've never done this before. Let's see how many minutes I'll save. Let's see if I can get to work early now without driving too fast. So it still says 701, it's gonna start recalculating. It's actually be over there in the left lane, on the left side. So recalculating, recalculating, recalculating. Soon it's gonna figure out what I've done. The, the app will, and tell me what my new time is. I'll bet I'll say five minutes. Still thinks I'm going the other way. And now it's recalculating. 708, yeah, so I only saved uh, uh, seven minutes. What, it says I'll arrive at 708 now? Wait a minute, how can that be? It says I'm going to take longer? It takes longer? To take the pass? I'm going to have to pay four bucks and arrive seven minutes late to work? That's not a fair deal. That's curious. I wonder why. Oh well, so we'll get this bike up to uh, 70, lock in the cruise control, and I'll, off we go, and I'll get back to my story. Come on in, guy, if you want to come in. So, um, so now Moses, baby Moses, is living with, um, he's living with Pharaoh's daughter, and being, and let's see, is, is that the end of the story? No, 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 quite a bit more, gee Louise. Of course not. Uh, that's one of the things I was amazed with about in reading Exodus, the first couple chapters of Exodus, is how fast the story is moving. Because now, <clears throat> fast forward, Moses is a grown man now. And he witnesses uh, a, one of Pharaoh's uh, overseers of, of the Hebrew slaves. He witnesses him beating one of the slaves. Now apparently the the Hebrew word for the or the or the, the Hebrew word for that what was happening was equivalent of killing. So Moses believes that um, an Egyptian slave master is about to kill a Hebrew slave. So Moses decides to intervene. He looks to the left and he looks to the right. There's no. There's actually what it says is there's no man watching. So maybe there were some women observing, but there's no man watching. And Moses uh, steps in and doesn't just stop the slave master, the slave master, the Egyptian, but kills him, and then buries his body in the sand. Now, at first, I was thinking, "Wow, thou shalt not kill," but then, of course, you know, there's some difference between murder and kill, and so maybe this was one of those cases, you know, where it was an act of defense to, because the the Egyptian was going to uh, was going to murder the but no but it actually said the hebrew word for it was kill that's what i read in the in the scholarship i'll have to look that up again because thou shalt not kill but then he killed wait thou shalt not kill oh gosh all these translated words oh the bible is such a mess with all these need for multiple languages and translations and i it's just that's just such evidence that it's not divine because what what deity would would allow their message to be communicated in such a messy fashion with such a such such a, uh, a an interpretation prone medium as language i've said it before but mathematics would be a much a much more stable uh, place to for dogma but anyway so moses you know, has killed now, and then kills the um, slave overseer, the Egyptian, and hides his body in the sand. Now the next day, Moses gets up and he's out and about, and he sees two Hebrews, two Hebrew slaves, you know, 
quarreling and he steps in to, you know, step between them to keep them from quarreling. And the one says, so what are you going to do? Are you going to kill me like you did the other guy? And Moses is like, oh no, the gig's up. People know, someone knows, and he knows that word will probably get to, uh, to Pharaoh about what he had done. And so he decides to, uh, to, to split, to leave. Now, that's important that, you know, he, okay, you're thinking, but he's raised in Pharaoh's household. What does he have to fear? My scholarship tells me that, and again, it's not me being a scholar. I'm reading the scholarship of, of, uh, of you know, scholars who have written, who've added appendices and uh, supplemental information to my NIV Bible. They said that, um, you know, Pharaoh's households typically were, ex the households of kings are typically expansive with lots of, lots of family members, lots of extended family members. And a lot of them can be very lowly minor positions, which apparently Moses was as, as well, having been not even the real daughter of one of, the son of one of the daughters, or daughters, and not even, you know, legitimate in, in, in that capacity. And the crime that Moses had committed was to uh, go against Pharaoh's authority because the taskmaster, the slave master, even though he was doing something bad, he was exercising the authority of Pharaoh. And Pharaoh would probably not be likely to let that pass gently. So Moses um, runs and he goes. He doesn't just go, uh, you know, go hide out by the Nile. He goes far. He heads all the way to, um, is it, is it Midian? I hope I'm remembering it right. Which is on the north east coast of Saudi Arabia, the Arabian Peninsula. Not Saudi Arabia, because that country wasn't then, around then. But of the Arabian Peninsula. And this would have been an area with, uh, I believe it said that there were Bedouin. And he finds, he comes to a well in that area. This is a lot's going to happen here. This is going to be the land that he's going to take the people to eventually when they go across the Red Sea. So he gets there and he comes to a well and there's some women who want to water their sheep, their flocks. Yet some, you know, some shepherds come and uh, try to shoo them away. So imagine a group of women wanting to use the water and some, a group of men arrive and say, get out of here women, you know, we're, we got stuff to do. And Moses sees this happening because apparently the women were there first. And he steps in and scares off the shepherds. And then assists the women, I think it's seven sisters. He then assists them in the watering of their flocks. And they are then able to get back because of his assistance, they arrive home early. And their father notes their early return. I guess this is a daily event where the shepherds shoo the women away who have to wait until the shepherds are done. <coughs> and then the women can water their, their father's flock. And they're going to do it slower because they, they don't have uh, Moses to help them out. So they get back earlier and their dad says, how did you do that so quick? Why are you here so soon? Wow. Oh, I see. I see why. This thing wants me to... Uh, the map wants me to get off here and go take another route because it knows I don't like toll roads. That's why. So I'm totally switching up. Let's see what as it recycles here what my new time will be. Hold on. Ah, 6.55. Good. So I'll actually make it back five minutes before work. That's good. So this is actually saving me a good amount of time. At least, you know... At least... Gosh, at least five minutes. So, yeah, because 701, no, six minutes. Saving me six minutes. Just enough time to slide into work before the bell. <laughs> so now, um, so the, so, so he, asked the, he asked his daughters, how did you get back so soon? And they explained that there was a man who helped them out. And the dad asks, well, where is this man? You know, well, go fetch him, that he can have, he can, he can eat with us. You know, he's gonna, you know, show some good hospitality to this helpful man. And so the women go and they fetch Moses and they bring him to their father's house and he dines with them and apparently he's going to then, he's invited to lodge and stay with them. What's more, <coughs> the man offers Moses, probably not that day, but within a short period of time, um, to marry one of his daughters uh, with the interesting name Zipporah. So Moses and Zipporah wed and they begin a life there in uh, uh, Midian, I think Midian. 
which on the northeast coast of Arabia. Now my scholarship in the Bible tells me that the there are ancient inscriptions found in that area that reference a deity with a name very similar to Yahweh. Not quite the same, it's shorter. But it, if you sound it out, it sounds really, it sounds very similar. And the scholarship supposes that Yahweh may have been a local deity of those people at that time. And that Moses may have picked up the Yahweh from them at that time, and that may be the origin of how Yahweh became the, the Moses' God. And of course now Moses is going to have an encounter with a, a deity, uh, allegedly, up on the mountain with the burning bush, which is coming up in just a bit. So Moses then lodges with the with the with the man and his new which of which he is now a family. He's the son-in-law. He's married Zephira. And they have a, a son together with a name I can't remember. And Moses calls him, gives him that name, um, mentioning that he is a foreigner and he has become a foreigner in a foreign land. It's interesting how they often do that in the Bible. You know, they I'm going to name this son Ralph. And I am a foreigner in a foreign land. It's like, all right, geez, with the drama and all. <laughs> well, I guess if you, in a time before TV and newspapers and magazines or the internet, I guess you got to make your own drama, right? As you can. I think that's it now. So now Moses has is set up with a wife and a family, and that's the end of Genesis 2. Da, da, da. All done. Oh, and I was kind of surprised because the scholar, the same scholarship in my Bible, excuse me, went so far as to, to say that uh, the story of baby Moses is actually a familiar, a familiar, would have been a familiar mo motif to the, um, Sorry, I was checking to see if that was a cop behind me. I'm going a little, I'm speeding a little bit. It's not, it just kind of looked like a cop car with all that, with all that stuff over the top. I wonder why it's got all that, it's strange. Anyway, he said that it, um, it would have been a familiar motif, the idea of the baby in the reeds. Apparently there was another, another hero almost a thousand years before in, in uh, Mesopotamia who had his start in the exact same way. His mother put him in a, re in, a, in a papyrus or a reed basket, then he was into the river and was picked up by nobility. And, and the, the scholarship said that this opening of Genesis 2 would have been immediately recognizable by the ancients as the starting of a great, you know, <clears throat> great dramatic tale. Just like when, and I, I made a Facebook post about this as well, just like when this is we would recognize the opening of a movie like Star Wars, you know, all the drama, and, and especially the introduction of a character like Luke Skywalker, you know, a young, you know, orphan, you know, you know, living a mediocre life with a great adventure ahead, ahead of him. Heck, Joseph Campbell even wrote a book, The Hero with a Thousand Faces, you know, to explore in this motif that it would have been easily recognizable by the Mesopotamians. So likewise, this, the you know Genesis or, or Exodus two would have been a recognizable to to them, and it's it's just our unfamiliarity with that ancient motif that causes us to perhaps mistake it as fact. A very interesting an, uh, observation, and it's very interesting to me that the Bible, the scholarship in the Bible, seems to be so even-handed. They are consistently like that, and it makes me wonder that the actual producers of the Bible. What, that they were comfortable with the edi this editorial commentary because it seems to be very, you know, we're going to tell what we know about what a scholarship's position, regardless of whether or not it sheds light that the Bible stories are real. It doesn't speak to any, and it really doesn't ever touch on the supernatural stuff except to touch it from a historical perspective or from the narrative, the narrative perspective or from the perspective of literature. I'm very impressed. Some of the best scholarship and most even-handed scholarship, maybe, that I've read, and it's in the Bible. Interesting. Well, anyway, here we are. I've made it over the pass. It's uh, the uh, 91 right there, the world's, the, wor the nation's worst freeway. I'm going to sign off now and uh, get started. Thanks for joining me, everybody. Have a great day. See you tomorrow. Make it a good life. Bye-bye.